Today we are continuing in our series, Hearing God. And this past weekend, Robert talked about ways in which we can test that we're actually hearing from God. But I want to just start with this. The fact that we're having a series called Hearing God means that God speaks. And not only does he speak, but he, he wants to say something to you and to me. The God of the universe wants to interact with us, wants to have a relationship with us. And it is a pretty mind-blowing thing that not only does God speak, but he has specific words for you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to shower you with his love. He wants to instruct you. Maybe he wants to discipline you. He wants to guide you. He wants to be there with you and whisper words of comfort when you need them the most. That is the God that we serve. Today's verses are from Psalm 27. I don't know if you've realized this, but I do love the book of Psalms. There's such great emotion. There's, there's real life that happens. And as the writers write these songs, write these poems from their hearts, there's so much we can relate to. We're going to start in verse 7 of Psalm 27, and it says this. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. And then this verse always strikes a chord in my heart. Verse 10 says, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Let's just pause there. There might be people in your family because of your commitment to Jesus that reject you. You might have friends, you might have coworkers who just really want nothing to do with you because you believe in Jesus. And I just want to say, even though they may forsake you, even though God forbid your parents, one degree or another may forsake you, God will never forsake you. Let's continue. Verse 11 says, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. And then verse 13 and 14, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And then we come back to verse 13 and 14. I just want to touch on this today. It says, I remain confident of this. So this is David who wrote this song. And he's saying, I, this, this is what I know. This is foundational for me. I've had experience with God and I, I am confident of this thing. He says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And if you are going through a difficult or hard time right now, these are great words of comfort and promise for you. That if you wait on God, if you seek his face, if you choose to follow his ways, he will guide you and you will see goodness in the land of the living. And then verse 14, it says, wait on, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart. And then it says it again and wait for the Lord. Waiting on God, waiting for God is simply just showing up and, and, and meeting with God. It's saying, God, here's what's going on. I think back to um, when Megan talked to us so eloquently and all the pain and the grief that she's going through. But she talked about, whether it was in the message or the podcast, I don't remember, but she talked about just simply showing up to God and saying, this is how I feel. And, and just giving that to God. And, and when she did that, so when she showed up and she's like, God, I, I invite you here right now. And I'm really sad and I'm really hurting. And when she does that, when she's sharing that with Jesus, she's not alone in that. And waiting on God can be simply saying, here I am, here's what's going on right now in this moment. What do you have to say about this? What word of scripture do you want to, to bring to mind to encourage me? What, what else, what picture do you want to bring to my mind? When we wait on God, we're saying, come Holy Spirit, what is it that you want to say while, I, while I'm dealing with this? While, whether it be a happy emotion, a sad emotion, 
whether it be a problem that we're trying to solve, we just simply bring it, bring it to Jesus and we wait on him. Waiting on God is a simple way to practice hearing God speak to us. It's like what we've already been learning to do is to simply ask God to come. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and minister to us so when we bring our needs to him, he can meet those needs. When we bring our emotions to him, he can meet us in the midst of those emotions. God is nothing to be afraid of and you can't hide anything from God. So you might as well just bring it to him. And when you do, you will be encouraged and you will feel like you're not alone. And so I wanna to pray today that you would hold on if you're in this place where you need encouragement, hope, joy, peace, that you would hold on then, follow God, seek his face, follow his ways. And I, just like verse 13 says, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So let us pray right now that we would wait on the Lord, that we would be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your word. And we simply just want to pray right now, come Holy Spirit. Whatever emotion, whatever feeling, whatever problem, whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, I simply want to just give this space for us to share that with you and then just simply wait on you. May we be encouraged today. Thank you. Thank you that you want to speak to us. And so God, here we are and we are listening. Come Holy Spirit.